Of course, it's raining again here in West North Carolina, but you know what? I don't care because I'm going to be inside installing these beautiful Cali floors from Lowe's. But uh, I do need some, uh, what do I need? I need some tools, I think. Let's see. Ah! Uh, let's see. I need, uh, I'm going to need this. Um, I'm gonna need, I do need my jigsaw, come on, which I think is in here somewhere. Yeah, there it is. I may need a jigsaw for around some cuts. All right, jigsaw, square. I need a knife. Let's go inside and see if I can find a knife. All righty, knife, check, tape, check. Pencil. Hmm. Oh, it said rubber mallet. And a rubber. Thought I had a rubber mallet. Ah, there it is. Ah! Rubber mallet will work. What else? Oh, I need spacers. I need some quarter inch spacers. Here, what is this? This is some nice oak. Let's rip this down to a quarter inch. So this should be all I need. Um, these boxes are pretty cool. They actually have a QR code right on them where you can just scan them with your phone and it brings up a little video about how to install these things. Now I've laid tons of floors like this, but you know what? Sometimes they have some different ideas. So it's always good just to kind of watch a video uh, from the manufacturer to see how they want this thing put in. So uh, I'm gonna do it their way. I'm not gonna do it Jay's way. I'm actually gonna do it their way to make sure that these are in 100%. But um, this is pretty cool. I think uh, it's time to get started. So I came in to start cleaning out this room of Nana and pop-ups and of course Martha's already got all the crap pulled out pretty much, <laughs> but whatever. So I am going to start in this room in Nana and pop-ups TV room. And the reason why is that I just kind of want to get my feet a little wet with putting in these floors uh, because I just want to make sure A, that they go in good and B, the really reason I'm doing it is because I want to make sure Stephanie loves it. Before I get started, or if you ever do this before you get started, a couple things I want to make sure that are not gonna happen. One is that when I lay my floor, I wanna make sure that when I reach the other end, I don't have like some just little sliver of a piece. So I'm looking at 114. Okay, so my panels are about nine inches wide. So that means I'm gonna end up at 108 with a piece. So my last piece is gonna be about six inches wide. So that actually works out perfect. Um, so that way my last rip is not this little sliver. So I'm gonna start on this side. I just thought going around this air duct thing would be easier going that way than it would be to try to do it coming at it. So I'm gonna start on this wall over here and I'm gonna go that way. Another thing I wanna look at is if my room is square, which I didn't build this house so it may not be. So again, 114 and some change. And over here, let's see, we have 114 and some change. So. So it says to start my first piece with an eight foot, eight foot, eight inch piece, about an eight inch piece. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut an eight inch piece. Now I need to make sure I have the right side. I need the tongue out. So I need it to be this way. So I need that tongue being out. So I need eight inches from this. I need tongue and tongue sticking out, <clears throat> sticking out. So eight inches or so is here. Now it says you can cut this with a utility knife and a square. So let's see how that works out. And then you can just break it. Let's see. Score. He did it over, I need something to do it on. What if I do down my square? Watch this move. Watch this pro move. What? Nice. All right, now I need my spacers. So I'm gonna take my spacers here. And I'm gonna do a quarter inch spacer there. Quarter inch spacer there. And this first piece is gonna go in like that. 
So I also did give myself a little tapping block just for a little precaution. It didn't say it in the video, but it just seems that sometimes they don't always go together perfect. So I like to just kind of tap them just a little bit to make sure that it's all the way home. So. Okay, so I gotta go around this box here and I don't even need a tape measure. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this piece, this is gonna be my starter piece. Okay, I'm gonna put it where it goes and make sure that it doesn't, seams don't line up anywhere. So I think our seams are good there. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold it off my quarter inch. You grab a spacer there just to play it safe. Eric could be killing me if you saw me using these spacers. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my pencil, I'm gonna mark right here leaving a quarter inch, okay? And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna put it in like that where it goes and I'll leave it off the quarter and I'll make a mark right here, a quarter inch. And then I just need to take that out. So let's go outside to the jigsaw and we'll cut that out. All right, so we're going good. Um, I'm going away from exactly what they said how to install it just because from past experiences i feel like this is the easiest way so what i'm doing is when i'm putting these in is i'm tapping them in first make sure it's totally set and then i'm going across the seam and tapping that in and i'm actually using a wooden block instead of a rubber mallet just because the mallet's a little bit smaller this i can actually go across the whole seam and it feels like it's just going together a lot better um, so that's one thing Another thing is, is that I've been using the cutoffs from that end to start down here. So that way I minimize my waste. But the problem is, is I'm getting this. Zoom, zoom, zoom. That's called the step. And I don't like that. If I kept doing that, it would be step, 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 step. And I kind of like a little bit more of a uh, random pattern, we'll call. So on these next ones, I'm gonna cut some of that one off and try to eliminate my step just because I don't like the way that looks. But besides that, I mean, it's going together great. It feels good, it's solid. I'm thinking once the trim is in, I think it's gonna look fantastic. And it better because it's permanent. <laughs> so. Yo, beat it. <laughs> Try to bite me. This is why I get nothing done around here. Stop. She thinks I'm playing. All right, so I got another pro tip. Charlie, seriously, go outside and chase the cat. Something. Beat it. Go. Get. Get. All right, so I got another pro tip. Um, so I'm coming to the end piece here, and you can pull a measurement like I've been doing, but there's always uh, human error when it comes to reading a tape measure. Maybe you pulled the wrong number, you read it wrong. So another pro tip that you can do is if this is my piece, and I know that I need this end and I need that to be good. What I'll do is I'll simply flip my piece over like this and I will put it up against my spacer. And then down here, what I'll do is I'll mark on the board right here where it needs to be cut, okay? Then I'll simply take my square, take my knife, This stuff actually cuts really easy. A couple nice easy scores like that. And then a little Fonzie. Yeah. And then I'll flip it back around. Now my cut is again where it needs to be. And my pieces should be cut to length. All right, so I'm trying to get started here in the living room uh, with this Cali floors. And I'm trying to get my layout so I know it's going this way. And I'm not sure where to start. I don't really care what that back wall looks like because it's behind the couch. So I'm not worried about what that looks like, how big of a rip it is or anything like that. So my biggest concern is kind of here around by the fireplace here. So if I started this piece up against the wall like I would normally, 
What's going to happen is right here, Nan, as you can see, is we're not going over this floor. So there's going to be a small little, are you over here? Yeah, I'm right there. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. There's going to be a small little rip right here, which I don't want to see that. Plus there's going to be some type of transition piece. So it's just going to be a little piece of flooring. I think it's going to look stupid. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this. Is I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to make a full piece just like that. Okay. That's a nice big full piece at the living or at the uh, fireplace here. And then what will happen is over here, there'll be a, a little rip against the wall. But again, this table's there. There's a bunch of stuff over here. I don't think you're ever going to see it. So I think that's going to be the thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start here. I'm going to chalk a line all the way across. So that, that way I know where this one's going to go. I'll get one line set up here and then I'll work that way and I'll work this way away from that one piece. And that's how I'm going to start. To quote one of my favorite movies, My Cousin Vinny, everything that guy just said is complete bolt. <laughs> Meaning everything I said last night about how I was going to start this floor, you can't even see it now, but along here, along the fireplace, uh, is complete crap. It's not going to happen. And the reason why is this, is that trying to put these pieces together backwards, they're meant to go one way. You start on one side of the room and you go one way, but because... The only way I can make this work completely, and this is kind of weird, but is if I started all the way on the far side of the house over there and worked one way, or started way over there and worked one way. And that's just not gonna work because there's no way I'm gonna be squared up when I come into this room, which is the biggest room and the most important room. So <clears throat> at some point, I'm gonna have to work backwards with these boards, and they don't go together as easy as they do moving forward. And I'll show you that once I get to that, but. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start on this wall right here. And I did some calculations last night. I pulled some numbers from there to my line here and to the wall. And I think I got a good idea. I got these ripped down to five and a half. And what I think that will do is that will leave me almost a full piece at the fireplace. And it won't leave me a crazy rip or anything here. And it'll allow me to work the easy way from here all the way through the kitchen into the living room or into the bathroom area. And that's it. Now here, when I take this transition and go this way into Bob Martha's room, I'm going to have to work backwards. And we'll talk about that when we get there. But I think this is the best case scenario working here in the living room where I want to look good. And hopefully it will. So, all right, guys, let's take a little break in the action. Spring break 2024. Woo -hoo. No, I'm just joking. But on a serious note, we are traveling. And the one thing I hate about traveling is the junk that you have to worry about buying at the airport. That's why I love nuts.com. I got a wide variety of healthy snacks for me and my family. And the beauty of it is I don't even have to go to the store. So I just walk out to the garage and what do I see? Nuts.com, baby. It came for me. And at nuts.com, quality is top priority. They actually roast their nuts and pop their corn the same day that it ships to you. So satisfaction is guaranteed. So let's check out what we got in this shipment. This one, I got a peanut butter and chocolate munch mix. Are you joking me? It was so good. I got some half dried apricots. Stephanie loved those things. We got some supreme roasted mixed nuts, which have 50% less salt and some bourbon pecans. You're obsessed. So at nuts.com, it's your one-stop shop for freshly roasted nuts, dried fruits, sweets, pantry staples, like especially flowers and so much more. Their awesome, huge, wide selection means there's something for everyone. And right now, nuts.com is offering new customers a free gift with purchase and free shipping on orders of $29 or more at nuts.com slash jaysway. So go and check out all the delicious options at nuts.com slash jaysway. You'll receive a free gift and free shipping when you spend $29 or more. Where's that at? nuts.com slash jaysway hey thanks to nuts.com for sponsoring today's video so um i think it's time for me to get some more sun here's where i'm going to start to transition so this half wall comes out i'm going to come out this way here but obviously here i need to go back that way so what i'm going to do here is i'm just going to put my piece where it goes like that and i'll slide it in to the wall like that and as you can see this wall is not really trued up so I'm gonna leave my quarter inch gap there leave a quarter inch gap there 
And then what I'll do here is I will just take my piece and I will put it here where it goes in the groove and I will mark. See now here I have to look at where the outside of that wall is because again it doesn't look very trued up. Um, I guess I can't really, I can just kind of eyeball it I guess. Something like that I think is going to be where I need to be. So I'll go there and I'll go a little bit out just to give myself some, uh, my space I need. So I'll take that line, I'll transfer it out here, and then I'll take these lines and I'll transfer them here. And then this needs to come out. And then this next piece is gonna to be tough because I'm gonna to have to get a little piece to go in there. But the biggest thing is I need to make sure that it's straight. So I think when I put this piece in, I think I'll be better. I might even start with a full piece here just to make sure it's straight and I know that that's all not cattywamped. So y'all know all we wear is true work. These clothes are phenomenal. And I have a pair of true work pants that have knee pads in them. And I thought that's what I grabbed this morning. But I didn't. I grabbed my T3s, the one that <laughs> they have lining in them. I am dying. I'm like, why am I so hot? I am like sweating. And it's like 50 degrees outside. That's part of the reason why is I have the wrong pants on. So I got to go get new pants on or else I'm going to die. I think it'll be all right. So we're going good. Again, this stuff is super easy to put down. It's just time consuming with one person. I got to, you know, cut. If we had two people here, what we would normally do is if Jones and I were doing this, is one person would be finishing while the next person starting a row. And then he would come to me, I'd finish, he'd start, and it would go super fast. But unfortunately, I'm by myself. Tomorrow now, tomorrow, I will have a helper. See if you can guess who it is. But uh, it's not Charlie. She has no thumbs. She can't even hold a hammer. Got this part done. Now I'm into the part where I need to transition two pieces into the <laughs> into the kitchen. So I'm just going to pull a number here, Nan. If you want to come over here a little bit, I'm going to pull a number from here to the middle of the doorway, uh, to the edge of the old wood. I'm 52. What do you think it is on this side? 52. You think? Yeah. Uh, that's a lot of that's a lot of pressure, Nana. And we have, oh, I can't do it yet. I don't have that. I don't have this other piece in, that's why. I don't, yeah, I don't have that other piece in. Okay. So let me put this piece in and then, and then I'll pull my we'll do it over. I was like, I'm like way off. Okay, well it should be 52. Let's see if it's even close to like 52 plus nine would be what, 61? I'm dead on 61. I know, you measured it last night. Yeah, but that means that I ran this whole entire floor totally square. Uh, see, you are so good. Oh, man, I love when Nana's here. You hear that, guys? You hear that? I love it, yes. All right, so here's the spots that I was getting to that have been keeping me up at night, to be honest with you, because this is the hardest thing to do because you have to go underneath this door jam, but you still have to get it to engage into the other piece. So I don't know um, if it's gonna work or not, but I'm just gonna slide this. I just had it in there a second ago. Come on. Come on. There we go. Okay, so there it's in there. All right, so now the problem is, am I gonna be able to hit it back into this channel? That's the problem. Without totally destroying this outside edge. Give it a whirl. Roll back up a little bit there, bud. Okay, I think it engaged right there. See, that's the problem is that this edge is so brittle that it breaks off. So I just need to make sure that nothing gets in there, but it looks like it wants to go 
but I don't know, it's not going. All right, after beating it for a couple minutes, I think I got it. You can see I cut the evolved stone back there, which looks good. Goes underneath my door jam there. Seams are all seamed up. Woo, yeah, now this edge again is a little bit compromised, but I think just a little bit of pieces missing is all right because there's enough there to engage on the next one. So, wow, that was a lot. Ooh, I just got a head rush too. Woo, yeah. All right, let me get this other piece in. Now, the other piece, I should just be able to slide right in. I'll just make it all one piece and just slide it right in. It should be easy. So it'll just be like L on each side, and then this piece will just slide in. So I'm about to hit another part of the floor that is going to give me a little bit of some problems. Is this transition from the floor to the stairs. Now, this tread that I put on when I redid these stairs, you can see a video on that one if you'd like. I ripped it down to be the same height as this. Now what's gonna happen is I'm going to put this new floor and it's gonna go up to here so it's gonna be higher. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this tread out and make a new one at that height. Now I haven't done it yet and I don't wanna stop the floors now to do it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a piece of wood and I'm gonna take a straight piece of wood. I'm just gonna put it right at that mark and I'm gonna screw it down to that floor. And that's going to be my stop. And then I'll start my boards this way, going that way. Just make sure they're butt tight. Butt tight here. That way when I pull this off and I put the new one in, it'll have a nice seam right there. So that's the plan. This is the piece that's going to meet up against my stop there on the stairs. And again, I want this to be nice. So see that edge? I don't want to see a cut edge. I want to see that and it makes it look like a full piece. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to take this jigsaw and I'm going to just jig out the back of this thing. I don't know if you can see there or not. Mm, battery's dead. Of course, every time I put the GoPro on, my battery dies. Try this one. So I just cut the back off so that when this hits, it hits against that front edge there and it will look nice. Got it. Can't, can't believe it. All right, so that's that door. Now I'm into this door, which is going to be just as bad. So this one I'm going to have to split like I did before. Half that way, and half this way. It's the only way it'll do. Only way it'll do. it. Trying to establish this straight line, and I really don't have much to reference off of because I don't have a wall there, and I can't get to a straight wall there. So what I did is I went off two things. So I came over here and I went off of my built-ins here. I got five and a quarter to the face there, and I have five and a quarter to the face there. So that's good. But now, if Willie, the guy who used to live here, if he put this tile in straight, I could go off of that too. So off of that, here I'm at seven and a half to that tile. And if I come down here, I have seven and a half to that tile. So this line right there is true to my tile. It's squared up to my built-ins. That's what I need to go with. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find a marker I got a permanent marker around here somewhere. Yep. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a mark on the front of this board. Just so as I'm moving it around and doing things, I know that 
that's where my line is and then I know that's where I need to be uh, to make this straight. So, whoo. All right, man, we're back at this floor from Lowe's, Cali Floors. I worked all day yesterday and I'm spent, but today's Saturday and uh, we're going to get going today. I got a helper today. Remember I mentioned that yesterday, I got a helper today. I'm gonna give you a hint on who it is. That's what time we're getting started. Who do you think is helping me today? Yep, you guessed it, Stephanie. <laughs> she does not like to wake up to an alarm clock on Saturday morning, so I let her sleep in, but I got everything prepped. So you're gonna be my helper today. Okay, I got, I got the battery for you, first task. <laughs> All right, perfect, yeah, you're gonna be the, get me material, make sure I got boards, kind of clean, vacuum, keep me going so I don't have to do all that little stuff. Can you do that? Okay, sounds nice. good. All right, here we go. We're gonna get at it right now. say I cut yesterday using the same jigsaw blade and I'll tell you what I don't know what's in this stuff but it will kill jigsaw blades so if you're gonna use a jigsaw make sure you got a lot of blades and I was using my circular saw yesterday but I'm telling you what it freaking flies crap all over you so bad it gets all over your face and it's terrible so as much as I can I've been trying to use a jigsaw just because it's not as messy but for longer cuts I have been using the circular saw but I'll tell you what it doesn't it's not fun at all so Yeah, these things were in the house all over yesterday. Nana was so mad. She was cleaning up after me all day long. So that's, Steph, kind of what you're going to do today. And you're also clean up duty out here. Sorry. I got you a blower, though. Just kind of keep this area, keep my work area nice and clean. <laughs> got it. Thanks, babe. <laughs> We've come to another critical spot in our floor and I totally forgot about this. I remember earlier in the video I had mentioned about when you're putting these floors in, make sure you're not gonna hamstring yourself with anything being too high. And I ran into this, this is a dishwasher. And it's pretty tight in there already, but luckily what I did is I looked underneath here and stuff, you probably can't see it, but there's this plate that covers it and it does have adjusted, adjusting feet on it. And they're all the way to the top, which means that I think I'll have enough room, but. I don't want to just butt the floor up to this, so I'm going to pull the dishwasher out and floor underneath it and then put the dishwasher back in. Get me. I've been doing this all day long. This is the first time I'm going to talk about it. So these spots where you're up against the wall where you can't tap it in with your hammer. Like in the field, you know, I got this little block and my hammer, I'm just giving a little tap, tap, tap just to make sure that it's, you know, that it's seated correctly. But here, I can't do that because I got no room. So I made this, <laughs> I made this thing. And I know it's not the prettiest looking thing, but what this is gonna do, and they make these, like they make them where you can buy them uh, for floors. But I'm gonna put that behind my piece and then I'm just gonna tap it. Okay, so this is the real test. Um, Ellis. Yeah. We got a problem. Oh, shut up. Um, no! Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> Mama. 
Hmm, just mm. when we thought we were almost done for the day. Well, the, see, the reason why is you can see, get down low, Ellis. See the gap there? Yeah. See the gap there? Mmm. Mmm, that's, mm-hmm, that's that. Mm -hmm. That's the reason why is because that is not high enough. <laughs> high enough. So that means what I need to do is I need to take this bottom part of this door off and take my planer and it'll be simple super fix. I just need to take the planer on the bottom and just yum, yum. I'm probably gonna wanna take more than I'm thinking because the reason why is remember it hit that floor about halfway in its open spot. And if it's tilted down or the floor is not level, the farther it goes, the shallower it's gonna get. So I probably need to take quite a bit off. I'm a little bit nervous about chipping this thing. If I go off the end, maybe I'll come in from this way. I got my planer set at zero, so I'm not taking a lot off. Steph, if you can just stand on that or hold it between your legs or something. There you go. Oh, a nice move. All right, here we go. Ready? <laughs> I think we should give that a try. Oh, you got some. You got some. So I did not cut enough off. And so what I'm going to do, and this is probably I learned from Jamie, is I'm going to take a pencil and I'm just going to make a little mark about maybe an eighth, three sixteenths. And that's about what I think I need to take off. So I'll put a mark there so that way I know when I get down to my mark. Because if not, I'm just going to be cutting it, checking it, cutting it, checking it, cutting it, checking it. And that's going to get old. So now I know where I need to get to. We need to take a lot of material. I'm going to beef this thing up a little bit. All right. Here. All right. Seventh times a charm. Perfect. Are you done? Mm -hmm. Is everything cleaned up? Mm, probably about 80% cleaned up. All right. Hey, you did do a great job today. Thank you. I know you don't think you did much, but every little bit you did just helped me out tremendously. So, and I think it looks fantastic. What do you do? You like it? Yeah, I like it a lot. No, this is your first day of manual labor in a while. You doing? You feeling all right? My back's a little sore, but nothing. In case anybody doesn't know, uh, Genius here fell down the stairs, what, two months ago? Mm -hmm. Two months ago and, st and still can't walk. It's actually getting worse. Well, I finally went to the doctor. Yeah, and they said we can't help you. So we are going on vacation in four days, going to spring break. I may do a video on it. We'll see how much footage we get. But I need to knock out the bottom floor. So I got three more rooms to do. I got this area here. I got the laundry room, the mud room, and the bathroom downstairs. I have Nana and Pop-Up's bedroom to do and Nana and Pop-Up's bathroom still to do. So I got three days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. That's it. So um, first off, washer and dryer. Remember, these are new. I was worried about this as well. Like all the other things, I want the floor to go underneath this. So what I want to do is make sure that the floor goes on top of it, which it does. So I'm good there. So I'm going to pull the washer and dryer out of here. I'm also need to take the toilet off, which I'm not real <laughs> enthused about that one, but I need to take the toilet off, washer and dryer out, toilet out. I'm going to bust this area out right now and get it done. Um, you can see I did use some old nasty, I even hate to say that word, silicone or something when I put that toilet in the first time because I didn't know about Lexel, white Lexel. And I also have the clean, clean fresh. I have to figure out what it is again, but I'll use something like that, one of my Sashko products because it's way better. That scraped off. And I don't know about that ring. I guess I can just use the same ring. I mean, it looks like it's still in good shape. I hate to tear it all apart. It was sitting nice, so... I've made my way into the potty area and uh, I need to cut out around this toilet and I'm thinking I'm going to use try to use full pieces just so there's no seams where the toilet goes down. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take my piece here and uh, I'm just going to put it where it goes like that. Oh, come on. Okay. And then I'm just going to mark here where I want it to be cut here and there. 
And then what I need to do is I need to find something that's the size of that toilet flange and see dog bowl, eight and a half bowl here. Okay, six and seven eighths. Oh, what's this? Oh yeah, seven and a quarter. So I'll just go inside the line a little bit. So what I'll do is I'll take this bowl or this plate, Jay's way, and I'll come out here and I'll put it down on my piece and I'll simply just put it out to where my marks are like so, and then trace. So this is the other piece that's gonna go in and I put it in place and I made a couple marks. But if you wanna check yourself, one thing also that you can do is, this is a piece I just cut off of the other one. So what I can do is I can put this together on there like that. Okay, and that's where my thing's gonna be. So I'll just take my plate, I'll put it out like that. My marks look pretty good. I'll take my pencil and then I'll just Mark there. This is my last two pieces going in. This is the rip up against the back. And this is where that faucet is at. Now remember, I wasn't sure what I was gonna do there, but again, my big brain, I was like, well, I'll just put a seam right at it. That way I can put these together and then I'll just cut my hole, my inch hole, right where it goes, right in the center of that. And then I'll just put these two together and then I'll get one of those clam. I think they make those silver, um, little covers, they make them snap together. So I'll just put it around there and snap it so you don't see the cuts on the floor. So let me just do this. <sighs> All right, I think that's it. All right, that's what we are shooting for. Nice little circle there. And I'll just get one of those little clips to go around that. This was leaking a little bit. That's why I had to put this thing on and then stick it on the drain. So, uh, but once I get the toilet on there, no worries, looking good. Okay, so I did get a larger, uh, what is this thing called? Wax ring, because I totally didn't even think about that. The weight of, or the size of the, Flooring now is up higher, so I definitely needed a bigger one. So I got this one extra large wax ring. Oh, hey, what's going on? Uh, with the phalange in it already. So we're going to put this, I believe, like that. And then we're going to put the toilet. Let's make sure there's no wax on the bottom of this thing. <clears throat> Nope, she looks clean. So now I just need to make sure I get that down on top of that. And the problem I have here is that I told you this thing right here is leaking. I need to put it in a bucket or something. Okay. So we'll put this in that and get it out of the way. And then I guess I'll just try to get this thing to go down on there without messing it up. Okay, well, I think it went on pretty good. Let's look at it to see if it's squared up. So here I got like two and 15, three and eight. So I gotta turn it a little bit like that. Three, three, okay. So it's squared up to the back wall. Again, just kind of put my weight on it. It feels pretty good and feels pretty level. So I don't know. All right, so I've made it into the final room back here, Nana and Pop Pop's room and bathroom. And uh, remember, I started 
on this wall here. So I came around the corner here, I had to end there and went this way. So now I need to go that way. And the only problem with that is this is not the traditional way to go where I'm gonna have to, instead of going over the top of one and clipping it in, I'm gonna have to go underneath it and clipping it in. I'm hoping it's not gonna be a problem, but uh, only was, I guess there's only one way to find out. Here we go. So to be honest, I was pretty nervous about going backwards with this floor, but in reality, it actually was pretty easy. Now I have not gone around any door jams or underneath anything yet uh, going backwards. So we'll see what happens when we cross that bridge. Again, it's always good to have a buddy. And I'll tell you why, because I just learned something that somebody probably would have taught me a long time ago if I was doing it by myself doing these. So I couldn't get that piece in right there because I couldn't tap it hard enough because I kept breaking the edge. But stupid me, what I did is I put a piece into it and then whacked on that side of it and it went in perfect. I wish I would have known that over there and I wish I would have known it there and over 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 there. Would have made this a whole lot easier, but <laughs> all right, it's in. I'm gonna have lunch. All right, on the home stretch, uh, going into Nana and Pop Up's bathroom, I got pretty much everything cleared out and now I gotta deal with that thing and it's old and it's rusted. So I was trying to take this bolt off over here, nut off, and it's just spinning. So I'm gonna need to grind it off. So watch your eyes, everybody. Think that should do it? Should be loose now. got the water attached still. Come on, idiot. <laughs> so the transition into the bathroom was a little bit different too because the bathroom floor was about a quarter inch lower than the bedroom floor. And I didn't want to try to fix it. So what I did is I just made sure that my seams lined up. So visually, as you're looking at it, it looks like all the boards go into the bathroom, even though there is a break. Getting this going here is a little bit slower just because I'm trying to keep it just kind of referencing my tile line there to make sure that all my joints line up and I don't have anything to kind of hold it in place so I'm just going super easy I'm just going to do a bunch that way and I think I can still maneuver it around if I need to but that way and I'm using all long pieces here it's not ideal I'm losing a little bit of material but I think just trying to have a joint in there would be way too hard to try to keep it straight. So I think I'll just do full pieces going that way, which I don't know, might look a little bit weird. And then coming this way, you know, I'll do some joints as I get into the closet because then you won't really see it. But So I do need to figure out what I'm gonna do here also. I don't know what I'm gonna put there yet, but I know I do wanna put a couple extra supports in just so I have something to nail to. So I'll probably just put another two by four here, foom, another two by four there, foom. And that way, whatever material I put in, it's the whole length. And when I run my floor, I'll just run the floor even to the wood or maybe even past a little bit. And then whatever material I put there, I'll put down on top of the floor. So that way I don't need any type of baseboard or anything like that. It'll cover all the cuts. I think that'll look nice. So uh, these Cali floors look fantastic. Again, Lowe's, um, thank you so much for the hookup and for the partnership. I love it. Um, and uh, let's get at it some more, I guess. Okay, these Cali floors from Lowe's are done. Well, kind of, on the main floor anyways. Main floor floors are done. But before I do the big reveal, I have a lot of stuff to do. I got some baseboard, I got trim, I have window trim, I have thresholds, I have transitions, I have stair landings. I got tons of stuff that I need to get buttoned up 
before I can do the big reveal. But now I am leaving tomorrow on spring break. Not sure if I'll do a video. I think I might have mentioned that. But when I get back at it in a week and a half or so, I got all that stuff knocked out, and then we'll show the big review. But again, thanks to uh, Lowe's for um, you know hooking me up on this product. Uh, Cali Floors, they look fantastic. And uh, I'll catch you on the next one.